right now, God, that you bless this service, God. Bless our speaker in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, use her, God, for your glory. Oh, let the word come forth with boldness and clarity in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, remember the women that's on the line right now. Somebody has a problem, God. Somebody is burdened, God. Somebody, hallelujah, feels alone. But God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch them in the name of Jesus from the crown of their head to the feet. Bring deliverance, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, God, remember our families. Remember our children. Cover our children, God, with your precious blood. Oh, God, we plead the blood of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, search our hearts, God. Take out anything that's not like you in the name of Jesus. We want to be right. We want to be saved. And we want to be whole, God, in the name of Jesus. Remember the sick and afflicted everywhere. God, we ask, God, that you go in those hospital rooms. God, we know you're already there. You're omnipotent. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere, God. And we thank you. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that after this service, somebody will be touched set free and delivered god change our mind god renew our mind give us a clean heart hallelujah and renew a right spirit within us in the name of jesus hallelujah glory to god i praise you right now god we thank you hallelujah oh god we thank you we thank you for how the devil the enemy didn't have his way on us this week god we thank you hallelujah but we're still in our right mind god we thank you Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for perfect peace. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, you promised to keep us in perfect peace. Oh, God, if we keep our minds stayed on you, God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Bless us, God. Bless the service. Bless everyone on this line. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody say amen. And thank God. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. And um, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I'm going to um, read our scripture, and then I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight. And so our scripture is coming from Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And the word of the Lord is blessed. And I'm just going to um, read a little, by, a little of her bio. Bear with me just one minute, please. Okay. So she was born on May 4th, upstate New York. She is the third child of nine children, born to Mr. and Mrs. Brooks. She attended uh, Cohasson Central High School. At the age of 15, she moved to Queens. Um, she attended Francis Lewis High School in Flushing. Um, she was told she needed to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and in April 1978, she was. She received the gift of the Holy Ghost on May 2nd, 1978. She's been saved for a long time. Um, she later migrated to the True Deliverance Church, where she served under she served under the late Bishop Crossley J. Cook and Mother Reba Cook. She currently serves under Pastor Milton Lashley and First Lady Maria Lashley in various capacities. It was her father, Mr. William Brooks, who taught her from childhood to share with others and to be kind to your fellow man. Certainly, he has been a role model and hero. Her professional career allowed her to work on Wall Street for 22 years at Golden Sack in New York City as a financial librarian. She has worked faithfully on a local district and international levels of Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. 
apostolic faith. Um, she has served as recording secretary, vice president, and currently is the superintendent for the Sunday School internationally for our Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Locally, she has worked at home, at her home church, True Deliverance, with the Armor Bearer Young People Union as president for 26 years. She has also served for over 40 years as a licensed missionary, usher, and women's council member. She has also served in her community on various community, on, I'm sorry, various community and educational boards, including the Board of Education as CTA president and SLP member. She is married to Elder Ronald Griffith for almost 40 years, whom she loves and respects. And together they have four beautiful children. And I present to some and introduce to others, Sister Dolores Griffith. Please welcome her with a hearty amen and a hand clap. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. God is good and he is good when he is good all the time. I am so happy and excited to uh, be to do my first Zoom. I want to thank Sister uh, Lillian uh, for uh, Duxon for this opportunity. When I met her, we just hit it right off. She's uh, she's a, she's a sweetie pie. I could talk to her. You know, some people you meet, you can talk to her forever. She's a, she's one of those kind of people. And when she asked me to do something, I was honored because I always feel it's a blessing and honor to do something for God. Amen. 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 The honors do uh, Bishop um, Joseph, the assistant pastor, um, Elder Staley, um, of course, Mother Joseph, and uh, Elder Staley's beautiful wife, and, uh, the whole, just everybody, and Sister Melanie Joseph, who is a, a, a dear good friend of mine, too. So I'm talking to family. So this is not strangers. This is me talking to family. And, I, <laughs> and what I teach, I tell everybody, everybody has a gift. Um, that you have, whatever your gift is, don't be afraid, because uh, everybody don't do everything the same. The same. So have a, whatever gift you you have and God give you, do it to the best of your ability, and I, and I guarantee you God will bless you in Jesus' name. My topic on tonight is gossip, and we're going to look at what first, what is gossip, okay? So we, make, so we get a clear, uh, uh, a clear answer. Gossip is a way of talking about someone behind his or her back. That creates a negative image of one being about, who's talk, being talked about. The Bible very clearly points out that the danger and damage involved when engaging in gossip in any way, and that's in Proverbs 20, 19. So gossip can be very dangerous. You can kill a person's personality uh, with gossip. People have gotten killed over gossip. Um, it's deadly, so you'll be very uh, uh, careful because what happens with gossip is like he said, she said. It's not something concrete. It's gossiping and bringing things and saying things. But the Bible clearly str speaks strongly against it. All right, against gossip because what happens? You can be, you can have a best friend, and because of gossip, that friendship can end. All right, so be careful with gossip because someone could tell your friend that you said something about them, which I always say. Uh, because I was raised, we was taught we had something to say about each other. When I was coming up, we said it. So to me, I think to me personally, a gossip is kind of like being childish. You said, she said, he said, we said, and all that. So and it's being dishonest and it spreads strife. Okay, so nothing really good comes about it. And then you may go to one person and you may say something, and it could be not true. Okay, and then you know most times people gossip. What they'll do. Don't tell the person, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Mm -hmm. Now, most uh, most times people, somebody's gonna tell somebody something. It may not be what you said, but they may just eat, add something additional to it. So gossip is funny and you have to be careful with gossip. And gossip does not, okay, it just doesn't mean, it's not just really talking. It's just saying a whole lot of stuff. And time when you gossip sometimes, most times you don't know what you're talking about. You're just gossiping. Like for someone says you touch something you bad. So there's somebody coming new to the church and you say, you know, I don't like that person. I can tell that she that's something that she, that's something wrong with her already, but the way she looked. You're gossiping because you don't even know the person. That's why it's important before yeah. you judge a person, you should get to know the person. There's a saying, don't judge a book by its cover until you read it, okay? So gossiping could be really
really, really bad. But there, it's one form of good gossip. When Jesus had came to town, that was a good gossip because they would say, who's this man? Who's this man? Who's this Jesus? What can he do? What's he doing? Why is he here? I heard some good stuff about him. And because of the woman with the issue of blood, she heard the gossip that Jesus was coming to town. She had enough faith to believe that Jesus could heal her. She said, if I could just touch the hem, not even a whole line, just the hem of this garment, I'm going to be made whole. Because somebody gossiped and she heard about Jesus. The man that was blind heard that he was coming to town. Somebody was gossiping. That's good gossiping. So you can have good gossiping too. There's good gossiping and there's bad gossiping. But the but the but the but that's the good gossiping when you say something good. And also too, when you I find too when you're in the midst of people that gossip, you have to be, you have to be very careful because that can also kill your spirit. That can mm. also um, kill your spirit. It can make you weak. It can make you judgmental. It could it could so it could so discord uh, between you and the person. I, I've seen things. I've seen where people have gossiped to other people, and the person don't know you, but because somebody told them something about you, they don't want to have anything to do with you. That's da- that's a dangerous type of gossip. And as Christians, we're not supposed we're not supposed to do that. And when I teach, I talk to me, okay? I don't just, just with you. when I teach, I'm talking to me. Nobody, nobody can't say I'm picking on them. I'm talking to me as I, when I teach, okay? So be very careful with gossip, okay? And with gossip also too, it's, it, it can be very harsh and harmful. Very harsh and very harmful to a person. And that could be in any setting. It does not just necessarily have to be the church setting. It could be any at your job. It could be any type of setting. I know when I was working on Wall Street, there was always some gossip going around about people, and I used to stay clear of it. And believe it or not, when, um, when you when you um, get involved in gossip with people, um, and they they maybe they may gossip and say the wrong things, and you're like you're like oh wow, but you don't say anything, but yet you're still you're sitting there listening to them, okay? So it's still gonna affect you, all right? So in Romans one and twenty nine says that you are full full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malicious. And gossip and slander, and we know for a fact that the, that the scribes and Pharisees had it out for Jesus. Okay, they had it out. They gossip about him. They made plans to get rid of him. So people were even making plans to kill your character. So they say, for example, you're in charge of a, a group in the church, right? Because they don't like you, they they go to their little group and say, no, we're not going to support Mary because we don't like her. We don't want you to support her either because you're part of our group and part of our clique. So you got to be very careful with that with groups and cliques because that also can start a lot of trouble. And when when there's problems like that, no one gets blessed. The the church is divided. The the body cannot fully work together uh, together and and the enemy's happy. He's he's, he's, he's got his his little piece in there and he's just messing up everything. But the person that's gossiping, they, they're not going to see that. They're going to think, oh, yeah, I got this. I got this. They're going to be on my side. But it's really the enemy using them, okay? So we, should be, so we should be careful with gossip. Also, the Bible says that there's six things, okay, that, that, that the Lord hates. He hates six things. He hates, he hates a person with a haughty look, a lying tongue. And another thing, too, lying don't come in colors. Somebody says, oh, I'm going to tell a little white lie. No, lying don't come in colors. A lie is a lie, okay? It does not come in color. Amen. It does not come in color. I'm going to tell a little white lie. No, no. A lie is a lie, okay? So one thing about lying, if you start doing a little lying, you can do a little bit more, you keep doing it, then you get comfortable and you keep making excuses. And next thing you know, you're a full-blown liar. So that's why we got to nip stuff and plead the blood even on ourselves sometimes, okay? And here's that shed innocent blood, okay? A heart that deceives wicked plans. Like I said, even uh, sad to say, but it does happen in the church. People plan and plot to do wicked things. It's not right. I'm sure we've all run across somebody that had it out for us in the church. And um, it's how you handle the situation. And let me tell you something. God will not leave you blind. God will let you know when somebody is, is, is uh, trying to work against you. Okay? He will, he, will, he will let you know. It's up to you how you handle it. All right? And there's a way to handle it. So God will teach you a way to handle things like that, okay? Feet that they may haste to run to evil. You know how you hear like a gunshot or something, you run to gunshots, you're like, 
person that runs a gun shop, man, get shot. So it's best that you go the opposite way. Don't be swift to run to stuff, okay? Don't be uh, swift to hear something negative. Uh, uh, a witness, uh, you know, somebody breathing out lies. And you know they're lying, but you but it sounds good. You want to hear it. Oh, that sounds good. Really, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Okay, so you got to be very careful. And one who sows discord among the brothers. So in the house of the Lord, that's clearly saying, if you're sowing discord amongst the brothers, let me make that very clear. That means separating people, uh, saying things, doing things that you know is not of God, excluding people, making people feel bad, doing stuff to them. Not like you may want to acknowledge your little group, but you're not going to acknowledge everybody. You may want to acknowledge this person, but you're not going to acknowledge that person. You're sowing, you're sowing discord amongst the brethren. Oh, I'm going to have a party for Sue, but when, when Jay's birthday come, I ain't having nothing. You're sowing discord amongst the brethren. And God said he don't like it. So be very careful how you what you say and what you do in the house of God. And another thing, too, you will reap what you sow. And you're going to get paid back for whatever you do that's not of God. If you do good, you're going to get right. good. If you do evil, I'm sorry, you're going to get it back. And, and, you, and the, what, I, I like about, what I like about God, a lot of times you got to put things in God's hands. Sometimes if we want to handle it our way, it's not going to come out right. But if we give it to God, our Heavenly Father, it comes out real good. Nobody gets hurt, okay? And God hates a false witness who breathes out lies, okay? So be careful telling lies. And the person knows when they're lying, okay? And I said, too, it, it, you, can, uh, you can lie and ask God to give you make a mistake, but if you're constantly doing it, you know it's just what you're doing, and you got to pay for it. Do not speak evil against one another, Okay? I've, I've, I've walked up about people talking evil about people, but I like I don't hear. But you know what I do? I pray. I said, because you know what? I got to save myself. So we have to remember at the end of the day, it, we have to save ourselves. So don't be caught up in stuff, okay? Don't be caught in people's business or because that person's popular. You want to be a part of their group because they're popular and you got to you gotta fit in and do what they do. Right there, that's, that's not to be a problem. First of all, you're, you're going to lose your identity because now you got to take on this, this group's identity. So just stay clear of gossip. The gossip, it can be very vicious. Like I said, a gossip can kill somebody. Like you, you can literally get killed from being a gossiper, okay? And you kill your, and you kill your spirit. So the, so, the, so the fruits of the spirit, when you start to gossip, the fruits of the spirit, they're not going to stay there. You're going to start to start, start to take back on that, the, the characters of those, the old man. And someone's going to know something's not right with you, okay? And like I said, be careful because we don't want to go around deliberately. Pe There's people that go around deliberately hurting people, and they and they and they get a kick out of it. They get a kick out of it. But that person uh, needs to check their fruits on their tree because something they're not bearing uh, good fruit. That's 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 bad fruit. A good tree bringing forth good fruit, and a corrupt tree bringing forth bad fruit. Okay. So that's the thing. Amen. Uh, be very mindful of it. And if somebody comes to you and they want to tell you something. And, and you not you you don't know for sure, you should not accept it, because what happens is that the person that you, they may be gossiping to you about that person that could be a good friend that you're gonna lose over somebody who's telling you gossip, because they don't like that person, and you can't say it don't happen. It happens. I personally have had uh, uh, people say things to me. I had one person come to me to my face and told me to my face. Okay, not even you know not even behind my back. Told me to my face. I don't like you. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I'm so sorry you feel like that. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you something. We have to remember, we are the king's kids. If they did stuff to Jesus, don't look with go. Don't look to lose your mind, have a pity party, roll all over the floor and cry when people do stuff to you or say stuff to you that's not a price. Okay? If they did it to Jesus, we have this, that's our father. We have the same DNA. If it did it to him, you got to arm yourself likewise, okay? But don't get caught up in stuff, okay? Do not. And if no one thing to it, they said, dog, that bring a bone, carry a bone. So mm -hmm. the person who want to talk to you about somebody, you need to watch that person, okay? You need to mind for that person. Because everybody that bring you gossip don't mean that they're your friend either. Don't, think, don't get that twisted. That's not your friend. If they're bringing you gossip, is you find that the gossip is not true, that's not your friend. Okay, we need to make that clear because God is God is love and He wants us to work together. He wants us to be fellowship together. He wants us to, to be sweet one to another. He don't want us to tear each other down with gossip and lies. Okay, so 
So, so gossip is very dangerous. And we have, to, like I said, I can't stress it enough. You have to be very, very, very careful. And the story with the young lady that told me to my face that she didn't like me. And let me tell you something. She, I wasn't surprised that she told me that because I already knew she didn't like me anyway. I was cool with it. But I, I would tell you why I was cool with it because when you get saved and you get saved right, then you handle things differently. You know, you don't go and smack the person in the face or tell them, oh, I hate you too. You, you got, remember now, you got the spirit of Christ. You got love, joy, peace, long suffering, tempers hanging on your tree. And let me tell you something. I, I guarantee you, some of them, some of them are one of them going to kick in. Trust me when I tell you. Because I, I, I'm, I'm going to say another thing. Don't ever say what you're not going to do. Okay, that's another thing. Don't ever say, well, I'm not going to do this. And this person, but somebody not, but not do this to me. And that, so don't say that. Just, just, just live your life and just whatever's not coming your day, let it come. Because you don't know what's going to happen to you day by day. Like today, I was at the bus stop and there was a man at the bus stop. And you, and one thing about God, he'll let you know something's not going all right. And he was just cutting up, just acting up and just walking. Like every time he came near me, I walked in a different spot. And the man ran out in the street, almost got hit. And I said, Lord, what's wrong with this man? Full of demons. And you know what? Sometimes, believe it or not, these people are backsliders. The devil has ran them out of their, their, their mind. They are out of their mind. He ran just missed the car. And the car almost hit the man. And I said, Jesus. I said, it's like he's on a suicide mission. So just things, like I said, gossip can lead you uh, down on a downward road, okay? And if you if somebody's telling you something too, you get a bad feeling, that's God wanting you to let you know that person not telling you the truth. They're gossiping. And sometimes people will get together. They, have, they ain't got nothing better to do. They so idle. They ain't got nothing to do. They, they'll they gossip and be busybodies. And everybody else's business will know your business. That's why I tell people, don't tell nobody your business. And when, sometimes when people want to know my business, okay, I went, I, a long time ago, before I got into church, I used to be rude. I'll tell you how I felt. When I got saved, I can't tell you to mind your business. I'll just look at you and smile. Because I feel, um, because God don't want us to have that same behavior. So I try to ask God to give me a way to behave myself wisely, okay? Wisely. If you don't want to tell people your business, don't tell people your business. And remember, if you tell people your business, and I tell people too, don't tell people your business so much where it's something that you tell them and, and they get mad with you and they repeat it. You're going to be devastated. Some things you can only tell Jesus, all right? So keep that in your mind, all right? Because things can get really ugly. And they and, 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 and the church, oh, they did fight. Don't get it twisted. They, they, they fist fight it. They, it, was, it got really ugly in the church of Corinth. So if it got ugly then, it could get ugly now. So, but like I tell people, just be mindful what you say, mindful who you talk to, mindful who you call your friend. Like I tell my kids, my, my kids, can, what am I doing? She can meet people. Oh, that's my friend. I said, no, that's not your friend. That is your associate. A friend is a person that you've known over the years. You got to know, you know about them. You, you, you experience things together. You look out for each other. Friendship is like a two-way street. It's not you, me always looking out for you. It's you looking out for me and me looking out for you. That's how you continue to develop a friendship. But sometimes when people see that you're close like that, they can start to gossip and try to find a way to break up that friendship. So it's always good to always not to let people know who you're really close to. Okay? Because people can get into your business. They also know, I'm going to mess this up because they're, they're jealous. So that's another 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 green eye monster is jealousy. Okay? So like, but you have to, like I said, be mindful with gossip. Uh, don't be a gossiper. We can all fall into that trap. Don't get twisted. You know, we can we can all fall into that trap. And so, like I said, you don't it don't mean you have to be a uh, you don't have, you can say say stuff. It can be something you can be gossiping about something good. Oh, we're gonna get together. We're gonna do this. You know what? Let's have this. Let's let's get something together. When it comes to tearing down a person's character or a person, that's when it becomes a problem, and that's where it's gonna make you weak, and you're gonna become a human garbage can. And tell you, look, they're going to be dumping stuff on you. And those are going to be the same people. When, when you need them, you're not going to find them. You're not going to find them. They're not going to be there for you. I'm sure we all experienced that. But we are God's little children, and he wants us to behave ourselves wisely. He, he don't want us to gossip. Unless we're going to, if you can't build a person up, don't tear them down. All right. And it's sometimes, you know what, you could be right in saying something, but it could be the wrong comment, and you could be wrong. So just be mindful uh, what you want to say to a person. Because sometimes people can say stuff. You say, what? Well, you, you, you'll say to yourself, they, let them say one more thing, one more thing. I'm going to go and tell them off. 
but don't do it like that. Go to them nicely and tell them, you know, you, you have a problem. Try to work it out Christian way, all right? That's how, as Christians, that was we're supposed to do. Leave your, your gift at the altar, and if your brother offend you, go talk to your brother, right? And try to get it straight, all right? Because because that's going to keep leading to more and more, okay? And um, so, like I said, the key of it is to do the right thing. And gossip, different names could be, it could be a gossiper, gossipy, gossipy, a blabber, big mouth, a loud mouth, different, just different names. Um, and as Christians too, when we get the, when we get the love of God in our house and our heart, we should not want to be a partaker of trying to destroy anybody with gossip anyway. Okay. Remember that some people, and some people get, believe it or not, some people love the gossip. That's all they do. Gossip, gossip, gossip. Some people say, some, like people who, some people who are home and they ain't got nothing to do. That's all they do. Oh, child, did you see Mary got a new car today? Oh yeah, girl, I'm gonna give me my that car. Oh yeah, girl, she thinks she's something now. Gossiping, they ain't got nothing. Oh, they have their little special circle who they want to gossip with. And you come around, they say, shh, 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 don't say anything. But anyway, people don't understand that when you do stuff like that, it just tells me that you have just said something. You had you had just said something about me. But it's okay. I'm good. Like I said, I'm I, I'm I'm not a petty person. I'm, I got, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an individual person. I don't get caught up in people's foolishness. Um, I, I'm an individual. I, I basically stay by myself, basically, and my kids. Um, I try to stay away uh, from, 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 you know, from people that gossip. And I know they're, 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 they're not, they're not, not. So that's my um, story. Uh, for uh, gossip, um, I try to keep it as natural as possible. And just remember, gossip just didn't start in our time. It's from the Bible, okay? They, they, they gossip in the Bible too, okay? So just remember that. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. <laughs> um, Sister Griffith, I just want to add, so I can put it in the chat, the scriptures that you referenced to. Yes. Oh, yes. You want the scriptures? I'm sorry. Proverbs. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Proverbs mm -hmm. 6, 16 through 19. 6, 16 through 19? Yes, that's what about uh, how, about the division. You know what? I'll tell you something about this pandemic. This pandemic has stopped a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Stopped a lot of groups and clicks, too. Love it. Okay. And also, uh, I gave you Proverbs 6 and 19 and Romans 16, 17 through 18. I'm sorry again. Oh, I'm sorry. I got Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Romans uh, 16, 17 through 18. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs 6 and 19. Proverbs 6, 17 through 19. Proverbs 6, uh, 6, 6 and 19. Mm -hmm. And James 4 and 11. And I want to just add, add this too. Sometimes you may feel you're all alone and you don't have no friends and that nobody loves you and care. Remember, Jesus loves you and care. And if you do the right thing, he will send somebody that you will that will enhance your life, that make your life better. Because um, as long as you do the right thing, God got your back. That's all you got to remember. We're all going to go through some, some type of emotional change as humans, all right? But just do what's right and right will always win. Always. So just do what's right. Emotionally, we go, like I said, especially women, we go through a lot of changes. You know, me, like I said, I, I'm not a person of groups and cliques because uh, when I, in my old church that I came out of, so I came to True Liberates and I just got saved. That's the first thing I ran into. And I promised God I would not be a part of groups and cliques. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm against it. Unless you're a group that's doing something constructive or you're doing something uh, to help people, I, I'm, I'm all for it. But if it's a group, that you that you would have seen a lot of people and um and so discord and, and people don't like another person because you I, I don't have nothing to do with that because that's not of christ 
Amen. Amen. Um, so we want to thank you for that word. We want to thank you for those um, the scriptures that you referenced to, um, a lot of nuggets in what you say. Um, does anyone have any questions for Sister Griffith? Come on, come on. I don't bite. Come on. <laughs> any questions or any comments? We love you. I love y'all too. I love y'all. That's my that the listen. She is my, my my beautiful friend. That's my roommate when we travel to our you to our uh, region too. Right there, especially she's, she's a gym. She, right. she take care of me. She take care of me. That's why I tell people be, be nice, be nice, and God will bless you. Yes. Yes, I have a comment. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the word very well. I understand yes. very well with exactly what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand me because, you know, like I'm more like a loner and I don't get involved in clicks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can very well relate to what you were saying. And thank you for expressing You are more it. than welcome. And I can tell you that you're a beautiful person and you don't take no foolishness either. <laughs> <laughs> don't you change. You hear? Listen, God can use you like that. You know why? Because you're not tied up to anybody's nonsense. So you can be a witness anywhere at any time. So keep that in the front of your mind. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, Mother prophes Prophecy. <laughs> Melody. <laughs> Okay. I don't know what you're going to do with Melanie. She's a gym. I love her. I just want to say thank you. I thank you, Lady Griffith, for the beautiful word. Now, listen, we've been having hot topics. This is a hot topic. You ever watch The View where they have hot topics around the table? <laughs> yeah. We have hot topics. And um, this one was really hot because of gossip. And um, I'm going to be honest. If you could all be real. Now, women, as women, you know, be real. They like to talk and they chatter and yes, women like to hear good school or whatever. And I'm gonna be really honest. I, I mean, I have been guilty. You know, I, in my in my years, my 55 years now, I'm I to be transparent. In my 55 years of living, you know, I've hurt people with my tongue. Okay, um, because yeah. maybe I wanted to hear something. I heard something good, a good school, and then I went and told it. And then you hurt other people, okay? When they find out, and then you get hurt growing up as a young girl, even in the church. Yes. You know, I have been guilty. Amen. I know I'm not the only one, but I'm repentant. I have been guilty of doing that. And when I found out that mm -hmm. you can hurt people, people become hurt. And um, Proverbs 18 and 21 says, death and life is in the house <laughs> You can kill somebody with your tongue, or you can build them up. And we need yes. to build up each other as women. And another scripture I saw, it was um, James 3 and 6, the King James Version. It says, and the tongue is a fire. You know, fire is hot. Fire Amen. is hot. Fire. Amen. <laughs> it says, and the tongue is a fire. Woo, a world of iniquity, a world of sin. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature. Oh my goodness. And it is set on fire of hell. So we have to watch women, our mouths, our tongue, um, gossiping. And you know, you ever been guilty of this? You ever get on the phone and say, I'm not talking about her. I'm not, we're not talking about somebody. But you know, you gotta be careful with all of that stuff. I see somebody. <laughs> I'm not talking. We're not talking about. Mm -mm. You got to be careful, careful of that, you know. And my father always talked about um, the late mother Lula Alfred, um, how that's Ella Staley's mother. I mean, grandmother. The late mother Lula Alfred would get on the phone, and she would talk for maybe like five minutes. God, praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm good. I'm doing well. Thank God. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and she would, wouldn't get in any trouble. And Mother Lulu on here, I don't know if she's on here, but she could say amen in the mm -hmm. chat. You know, I'm right. You know, so sometimes, you know, you have to, you have to do that. Shun the very appearance of evil, right? Amen? Amen. So, women, amen. Um, so moving forward, this is what we're doing. The Lord has laid on our hearts, my heart and Sister Lillian's heart, um, these topics. The, the overall theme is issues of the heart. We're trying to get our hearts ready, get our hearts pure, get our hearts clean, ready to be, go back with Jesus when he comes. And if we fall amen, short, amen, amen. And if we fall short, mm -hmm. you know, we all sin and have come short of the glory of God. But amen. If we fall short, amen. you know, now amen. we ask God for forgiveness, we repent, and we move on. We there move you go. Right? Yes. Sorry, Lord. Do it again. Sorry, and keep it moving. So that's what we're trying to work on now. Trying to get ourselves as women ready to go back with Jesus when He comes, because He's He's coming back soon. The Amen. next the next topic will be July twenty second, and it's going to be on love. Now, love is love could be challenging. Okay. How can you love? Sometimes you mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to love somebody you don't like. <laughs> what? <Yeah>. What? <laughs> Woo. So that um that going to be July twenty second on Wednesday, and my niece, Lady Janine Boo, she's going to teach that one. Uh -huh. so, okay. Speaker, so tell your tell your neighbor, tell your friends, spread the word. July twenty second okay. is going to be on love. Second. Ooh. July 22nd. And then after that, okay. I, I see you, Madam President Bernadette. I see you in the chat. And after that, we're going to have unforgiveness. That's going to be the next topic. And then after that, we're going to let it go. That's going to be the final topic, okay. let it go. And that's going to be the Ooh, end. Okay. okay. So um, mm -hmm. Sister Bernadette has something to say. Like, Madam President, that's our district Women's council president. Yeah. I have Sister Bernadette. Where are you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm multitasking. I'm on my Zoom and I'm on your Zoom. But I just, wanted to say, I just wanted to say to the president and the vice president of Refuge for Rockway, big ups, you're doing your job. You know I'm going to push you. You know I'm going to push you this year because you're going to get them reports in. But I also want to say praise the Lord to everyone. Praise the Lord, Sister Griffith. God bless you. What a wonderful session that we've had. One of the things that is important too in terms of gossiping that people may not realize is gossiping. When you are talking and you're around unsaved people, ooh, ooh, yes. you talking, oh, yes. you, you yes. talking stuff that's with, with going on within you, okay? And you talking to this unsaved person about a saint. Ooh, that don't go. Amen. Because they will <laughs> never come to Christ. They will never come to Christ. So you <laughs> must govern yourself. You yeah. must not do that. And I know a lot of people that do that. They talk about saved people in front of unsaved people. You expect them to come to Christ? They're not. Why would they come to Christ and you're doing that? How about that's something to be very mindful of. God bless you. Love you all. How about, Madam President, how about talking in front of your children, too? That could be bad, too. Absolutely. You have to be very careful because you don't want to discourage them. You know, you know what I'm saying? You want to encourage them and bless them to go further in the Lord and take, teach them, take them under your wing and say, well, mom, this, this happened. I said, well, you pray for them and don't you do it. Come on. Okay. Exactly. That's what you do with your children. Okay. But I, I know a lot of older saints that talk about saved people to unsaved people and that's not good. No, okay, no. so you you all need to take heed. I love you. Gotta go. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> love you. Beautiful. So, before we all go, if you were blessed by the message and you would like to see, I have put in the chat, um, cash app, um, it's um the dollar sign refuge eighteen thirty seven. Um, I believe we also have Zell. Is that correct, um, Lady Mel? Givelify. Givelify, I'm sorry. The Givelify app. Um, and you look for the Refuge Church of Christ. 
And you can also mail in your gift if you are not on any of the, you know, electronical things that we have going on. And I do understand the Lord let me know the last session we had that everybody doesn't have Cash App. You know, everybody doesn't, um, you know, can give, you know, use the technology to give. But um, the Lord let me know that, you know, if you've been blessed by this, please, you know, you can put an offering in an envelope. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the bishop's daughter. He, he, I learned from him. He just asked. That's all he does is ask, and I'm asking. If you can just put the offering, put women's council, because we're going to come back in the building once soon, and then we're going to, you know, these funds are, we're going to use for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. So um, if you could put it in an envelope and put women's council, if you want to mail it to the church, 1837 Mott Avenue, if you don't have Cash App, that will be greatly appreciated also. Amen. Amen. Anybody have anything else to say? Before we close out? Mr. Griffith, thank you so much. I My pleasure. We, um, before we close out, we want you to close out in prayer for us, okay? Yes, ma'am. Before, let's make sure nobody has anything else to say. Anyone has anything else to say? Any comments? Somebody say yes. Okay. Go ahead. I see yes. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? This yes. Praise yes. the Lord. I Praise have been Lord. truly blessed by this topic. I've just been blessed by your right. woman's council Bless. each Wednesday night. The Lord has truly blessed from the time I logged in when Dr. Glennie Metz was on. Oh my God. And I have been communicating with her ever since. I just want to encourage you, women's council, president, vice president, and all of the delegates continue on in the name of Jesus. And you know, one thing I just want to share just growing up, when I was a child, my uh, brother and I, when we grew up together, um, my parents, whenever they had a discussion, um, about, you know, about any topic that wasn't appropriate for a child, what they did was they went into the bedroom and locked the door and had their discussion. They would never discuss any church business in front of us growing up. So I thank God for that because that's just what I do even in my home. When my husband was alive, we would discuss things quietly without the children around. And that's just something I just want to share with the members of the body right now. Whatever it is, you have to, because sometimes we have to talk about a few things. We're not gossiping, right. but we just don't want to discourage our children because we want to see the whole family saved. So whatever you got to say, and if you feel that it's going to affect someone, don't say it. Amen. Don't say it at all. Pray about it and leave it alone. Like Sister mm -hmm. Griffith said, don't just walk away. And I love what Sister um, Melanie, what you said, reminded me. I called um, one of the international mothers, a uh, missionary. I called her just to check on her to see how she was doing. And I'm going to tell you, she got on that phone, old fashioned, old time mother. Mm -hmm. She got on and she praised the Lord. Oh. Sister Shine, how you doing? Oh, it's so good. How the family? How you doing? Oh, well, I gotta go. And she didn't even give me a chance. <laughs> so, so, Sister Mel, when you mentioned that, it just took me back to that conversation. Those mothers don't play. They feel oh. they be business for Jesus. Yeah. They are going back to see Jesus, yeah. and we can learn from them. We can learn and yeah. glean from them. You know, Ooh. and that's what I do. I love hanging with the mothers. I love reaching out to the mothers because they teach me down through the years. They have taught me. And I just thank God, you know, just it, it, this is just very uplifting and very encouraging. And it just causes us to continue on with the Lord. I mean, the Lord is so good. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to take up so much of, of your time. But one other thing I want to share is how I have my grandkids with me. And let me tell you something, when you do good things in front of them, those are the habits that they will pick up. Amen. These Amen. children pray. We have family prayer with my grands every day at 630. 
Mm. When I'm running late, they said, Nana, it's 6.30. It's time to pray. Wow. When, not, when I don't get Ready. to my room in time, they said, Nana, we're going to go and we're going to start the prayer. <laughs> Let me tell you, yeah. they, will pick, <laughs> wow. they will pick up. You do good. They will pick up those good habits. Mm. And I was talking to Sister Lillian about, pro well, she mentioned about um, Proverbs today about mm -hmm. um, issues of the heart. And I texted, I said, oh my gosh, I was just in a conversation with my grandkids. We went through Proverbs chapter four and they know that wisdom is the principal thing and then all that getting, get understanding. And they know that they have to get that wisdom. And I'm gonna tell you these kids right now, when they go home to their mother in Delaware, they will not be the same. Cause God <laughs> got his hand Amen. on my and I praise God for that. That's all I'm gonna say. But keep on going on, Fred Refuge Broadway. Broadway, you're doing an excellent job. I love you. I was even in the prayer that noon, part of the time. While I was working, I was able to, to chime in at the noonday Amen. prayers. Bro. God bless y'all. Thank Amen. you. God bless you, Lady Shy. We appreciate that input. We appreciate you. Amen. Um, anything else? And this is just to help us grow. You know, this is this is helping us grow. Okay. Amen. The devil telling me, oh, you put yourself out there. But you know what? I'm glad I'm growing. I'm not Amen. Wondering. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Something in my ear said, Oh, you just put yourself out there. You just put it. But right. you know what? I'm, right. not, I'm not what I used to be. Amen. There you go. Oh, girl. We're going forward. We need to go forward. Amen. 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 All right. Take it late, um, Lady Griffith. God bless you. Amen. All right. God bless all of you. you. you yes. I love, I love you all. We work as Thank one. You. Thank you. God Amen. bless you, Sister Griffith. Love yes, you all. Love you all. Lord love Jesus. You too. Pray us out, Sister Griffith. Please. Uh, yeah, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness. Lord, we thank you for the session. Lord, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for being God. We ask you to bless everyone that's on this conference call. We ask you to protect them, Lord. We ask you to give them their heart's desire. Lord, we ask you to just have your way in our lives. Not our will, but your will be done in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the growth that you've already brought us. Lord, we thank you for the protection. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your, your sacrifice, how you gave us, how yourself. You didn't, have, you didn't have to do it, but you did. We thank you for everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.